Good day, fellow scientists and other curious minds. Today's bread and butter experiment is yeast transformation. So you can use a transformation to change the genotype of a strain. The DNA we transform is either going to integrate into the genome as a PCR product or replicate as a DNA plasmid. We can use this transformation to mutate a gene, delete a gene, overexpress a gene, or try to suppress lethality. So what we're going to do is we're going to get some strains out fresh, make a fresh inoculation, grow up some cells for the next day, do the transformation, and then we will test the strains before freezing them. Day one, thaw and grow strains. Get fresh cells out of the minus 80 for the transformation. Streak them onto YPD or selective media. Incubate at 30 degrees for about 24 hours. Day 2, Inoculation. Fill a flask with sterile media. Inoculate a small amount of cells to start a liquid culture. Prepare some dilutions if you want to avoid over-inoculation. Incubate the cells overnight at 25 to 30 degrees. Day 3 Transformation. Take the liquid cultures out of the incubator. Measure the OD of cultures that are not obviously saturated. OD600 value of 0.6 to 0.8 is ideal for exponentially growing cultures. Harvest the cells by centrifugation. Pour off the media and wash with Tel Buffer. Tel Buffer is just Tris, EDTA, and lithium acetate diluted in water. Add tell buffer to the tube and vortex or invert to wash. Harvest the cells again and remove the wash buffer. At some point during the harvest, thaw salmon sperm DNA at 100 degrees.
Add 35 microliters of salmon sperm to each tube after it has cooled again. Add 5 to 10 microliters of water to the negative control. Add 5 to 10 microliters of the plasmid or PCR product to be transformed. Resuspend cells in tell buffer and split into each tube, roughly 100 microliters each. Add 900 microliters of peg mix to each tube and mix well by vortexing. Peg mix is polyethylene glycol diluted in tell buffer. Peg mix is thought to improve transformation efficiency by altering the chemical environment around the cell to promote DNA uptake. Incubate the transformation reaction at 30 degrees for 30 to 90 minutes. Get some fresh plates ready for plating the transformed cells. After the incubation time expires, add 60 microliters of DMSO to each tube. Vortex well and incubate at 42 degrees for 15 minutes. Harvest cells by centrifugation and carefully aspirate away the peg mix. Be very careful not to suck up the gloopy mass near the cell pellet because the cells will likely come with it. Resuspend the cells until buffer, which can be tricky if there's a lot of solidified peg mix.
Plate the full volume of resuspended cells on YPD and spread with glass beads. After the volume soaks in, remove beads and incubate at 30 degrees overnight. Day 4, Replica Plating. Place the sterile felt over the replica block and make a stamp on the felt with the lawn of cells from the transformation. There's no need to apply significant pressure to the plate, just ensure that the agar is making contact with the felt. Lightly press the new selection plate onto the cell covered felt. Incubate the new selection plates at 30 degrees for 1 to 2 days. Day 5, Patching Positives The moment of truth, look into the incubator and see if there are colonies on the positive plate. There should be theoretically none on the negative control plate. Streak a bit of each positive colony onto a new plate with the same selection. Allow the cells to grow into a patch for one to two days. Day 6, freezing and testing the strains. After a day or two, the patches should be grown and ready to test. Any false positive colonies will not form a healthy patch. A small amount of cells go through the crude genomic prep. A tiny amount of DNA gets tested by PCR. After screening for confirmed positive strains, they are frozen. Check out the follow-up video to see which transformants were positive and how they were tested.